that song you just heard, or more specifically this text representation of that music, was generated by a neural network, and in this video I'll show you how I did it. There's a website called The Session um, that lets you search for traditional Irish music, and for each song it provides not only just the sheet music, but this so-called ABC notation, and this is a very simplified way of sharing melodies for these songs, um, and then the artists or the musicians are responsible for adding all the embellishments and their own sort of takes on it. Um, but it's a very nice a sort of condensed format, and it struck me as something that would be quite interesting to feed into a neural network, and then see what comes out the other side, um, see if it can learn how to generate this kind of music. Because when you play it, a lot of it's not, not um, derivative, but fairly repetitive and fairly predictable. So I thought a neural network should be able to learn how to compose some of this Irish music. So task number one was getting this data. Um, the session has a nice sort of interface for downloading an individual tune, but if we're going to train a neural network, we really need hundreds of tunes or ideally thousands of tunes. Um, so the first thing I noticed was um, when you search for something, you can see page one of 558, and in the URL at the top, there's page equals one. Um, so this is great. We're going to download this web page and then all the subsequent web pages for the other pages of results. Um, and then for each of these, we're going to try and access each of these tunes and pull that data. Uh, so let's see what that looks like in Python. I'm going to be using um, Beautiful Soup as a library for parsing HTML, as well as uh, the requests library for actually downloading that website data and some other bells and whistles for um, improving our quality of life as you wait for things to download. So the way this works, we pass in that URL, the session.org tunes, I'm searching for a particular type of song, and page equals one, and we're going to get back a whole bunch of data. And when we pass it into Beautiful Soup, it's going gonna, it's gonna to sort of split that up and, and pass the HTML tree, but it doesn't know exactly what to look for. So to figure that out, the way you do it, or the way I do it, is to go to the web page, inspect the element with the sort of built-in Chrome Dev tools, and look for the bits of information that I'm interested in. So in this case, I want to find the link for each of these tunes. They're in a list, and we have each list item, li. Um, they all have the same class, right, for the styling. Um, and then within that, we have the link and some extra details. So this is perfect. This is exactly what we want. Um, so if we go back to our scraping, we can tell Beautiful Soup to find all these list items with this particular property. So everything that's a list item, that has the class manifest item, just like we saw on the web page. And when we run that, sure enough, we're going to get all the URLs. And if we go back to the thing, that's exactly what we want, the URLs to those particular tunes. Um, so that's step one. Um, each tune has its own web page. So now we need to go to that whole web page, like this. And we need to pass this whole web page and get just the bit that we want. So again, we're going to inspect this element. Uh, this time it's in a div, class equals notes and somewhere in there is going to be all the information that we want. So um, we get the particular page. In this case, I'm just going to look at one example, um, pass it into Beautiful Soup, ask it to find all divs with this particular class, and in fact, not find all, just find one, because we only want the first arrangement. Um, and then if you look inside, you can get the actual content, or you can look at just the text. Um, and this is what we see on the web page. And in there is the important stuff, the notes, the um, standard, the time signature, the type of song, and the title. Um, so you could go further and go within that div HTML parsing style, or you could do what I did, which is just write a little function that's going to split up this text. Um, they have these really nice sort of standardized ways of representing things, and um, sure enough, that's going to take in this mangled string, and it's going to spit out exactly what we want. We have the title, the type, the meter, the length of each note, the key, and the notes. Um, so this is like data achieved. The final step is to say, okay, we want to do this for hundreds or thousands of songs. I don't want to do it one by one, and I definitely don't want to do it on my slow home internet. Um, so we're going to take advantage of the thread pool executor, which is like a multi-threading constructor for running things in parallel. Um, and we're going to use this function here that's going to be called in multiple threads, multiple workers, you could say. Um, so each of those is independently going to go, we're going to give each one a URL, it's going to fetch that URL, pass it, grab the important part with the notes, um, turn that into our nice sort of descriptive tune, and then write it to a file. And this um, CSV writer lock, this threading lock, is going to prevent it overwriting or, or clashing when multiple threads try to write at the same time. So plunking all that into Google Colab, um, it's not actually that much code. And it didn't take long, about half an hour, to run through 
500 pages of results or 5,000 individual tune pages and to pull out the key information. Um, and the nice thing is you only have to do this once because now I can save this. Uh, it's on my drive, it's on GitHub. Um, so now if we want to play with this, we don't have to do the scraping again. We can just go and load up that data from the CSV. And it looks like this. We have the name. Um, let's go back here. Yeah, we have the name, the information, and then the notes, which is what we care about. Um, so the next part is the modeling. Now we want to turn this set of existing tunes into something that can generate new tunes. Um, and the way I approach this is sort of a fairly common approach in something like text generation, where you build something called a language model. And the idea is that this is just a neural network that, given a sequence of inputs, tries to predict the next item in that sequence. And that could be words in a sentence, that could be amino acids in a protein, or in this case, it can be notes in a song. So we're going to load up the data, and I'm not going to actually run this notebook because the training takes a little while, but I'll just skim through. Loading the data is fairly trivial because we already have it saved in a nice CSV file. You're welcome to go and use that as well. Um, so we need to take what's currently just a random string, and we need to tokenize it. We need to split it into individual sequence items that we can feed into the neural network. Now with a, a word sentence, um, we could use all the defaults and split it into words, and FastAI knows how to work with that. Um, but for this, we need to build our own tokenizer. Um, so I made a very simple one that's just going to split into individual characters. So when you see a string like this, it's going to pass the network each individual one as its own token. Not too complicated. There are better ways to do this, which I'll explore in the future. Um, but for now, just to get a proof of concept, I thought this would be enough to see whether the network's able to learn any sort of understanding of this music. Um, so then for FastAI, which is what we'll be using for the actual modeling, um, you need your data in the data bunch or some data loaders, and we can just use their nice factory method, pass in the data frame, which we've split into train and validation, tell it which column we're interested in, uh, give it our custom tokenizer, and then we end up with something that's able to sort of automatically provide batching and all these other sort of um, neat functions. Um, and so each batch looks something like this. This is its representation. You'll notice there's some extra tokens like um, xxxup up for uppercase. <laughs> so that's, this is sort of closer to uh, the, the kind of tokens that FastAI is going to feed into the network. And it knows it's going to get most of this as input and try and predict the next token as its sort of target. So um, now we're ready for training. And the, the actual training part is very bog standard. You can get the exact same code from any example training a language model. So we're going to create a language model learner. We're going to use the LRFind method to pick a good learning rate initially. Um, I went with one times 10 to the minus 3, um, train it for a little bit, and we can see this accuracy here is how often does it predict the correct next token. Um, already something like 30%, which is not bad. Um, then we unfreeze the network so that we can train the whole network, not just the, the later layers. Um, I think it might actually be unfrozen already, given um, the fact that we didn't start from a pre-trained network, but I'm not sure. <laughs> um, better to be safe than sorry. Um, this time it's already learnt a lot of the easy stuff, so it's not got that characteristic learning rate curve. Um, so instead we're going to train it, and we're going to train it with differential learning rates, so the um, earlier layers get trained with a smaller l learning rate than the later layers. And I'm picking from this sort of region here before the loss starts increasing, training for only 10 epochs, um, and depending on the run this gets up to like 35-40% accuracy for predicting the next token. So not too bad. And you can train for a lot longer, if you've got patience to wait, only 20 seconds per epoch, you can do a lot more training there and end up with a better model. Um, but then comes the fun part, now that we have this model that's been trained to predict the next token in the sequence of music, um, we can tell it to predict a whole bunch of new, new sequences. Um, so in this case, giving it a starting note, telling it to give us a hundred sort of continuations of that, and we end up with this kind of funky looking tune here. It's got some, gets a bit confused towards the end, puts in some invalid characters, um, but if we go to our um, online music editor, we can paste this right in and we can see the resultant tune and download it and listen to it. Um, yeah, so it's kind of a fun process. Um, you're welcome to go and play with this notebook, uh, try and link everything you need, um, predict some crazy songs, plug them in, listen to what they sound like. Um, the, the output isn't uh, necessarily coherent, you can see it kind of goes all over the place, so you need to experiment with training. Um, training for longer will get you slightly better results. Play with the temperature, um, the higher the temperature, the more creative the model is, the more it's going to sort of deviate from the most probable path. Um, 
so that means it gets more interesting, but also a uh, sort of higher chance of just going completely chaotic. Lower temperatures is more like safe, um, but it can just then produce the same note over and over and over again because it's locked in some sort of minimum. Um, yeah, so it's very fun to play around with. Um, and then if you can actually play Irish music or you have a little bit of musical understanding, um, the final step into turning it into an actual tune is to just massage it a little bit. So we take the output, um, change some of the timing so that it fits with a regular meter, um, you know, add some repeats to give it a bit more consistency, uh, maybe pick a phrase that you like and repeat that phrase, you know, at the end of every four bars or something like that, just to bring it closer to the more traditional structure because these networks are very good at predicting the immediate next note, um, not so much at keeping a consistent structure across a large um, musical piece. And that's something I'd like to try and play with in the future. But yeah, this is just a, a day's experimentation. I hope uh, you enjoy it, and we'll end once again with that song. Feel free to skip, and we'll see you in the next one.